change when I call you. And things change when I call your name. In other words, I, so it, it, that means right there, if you genuinely, now, if you, don't, if you don't know how to walk that kind of lifestyle, and that's what we'll be showing you, then you need to learn it. You need to learn how to get to a place in your life where when you call on the name of Jesus, things really change. Now, even if it doesn't change immediately, you know what's going on. In other words, I, I want to be part of the process. Okay, how many times have you, as a, uh, I mean, have you uh, maybe as a kid, you asked your parents for something, right? He, and they said, no, it doesn't make sense. But now that you've grown, now that you're an adult, right, you will, have, you will look back and, and think, you know what, actually, that was such a ridiculous request. And, and if my kid asks me that same thing right now, I'm going to say exactly what my parents said to me at that same age, no. Why? Because now you've grown, now you understand then the reason why you were denied makes sense. Um, 1997, 99, I think it was 97. So I was applying for British, British passport, okay? Now, this here was uh, myself, I was in Cyprus, applying for, uh, uh, my wife was here in England, and I was applying for uh, uh, a visa to come and visit her. And they asked me, will you stay when you, will you stay in England when you, when you visit? I said, no, 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 no. I mean, I, have, I had so much going for me in Cyprus. Yeah, right, you know, working as a, tra working as a, working in a factory, you know. I, <laughs> yeah, so I said, no, 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 no. First of all, I said, yeah, I may want to stay. I said, but I would really like an opportunity to come and see the nation first and then come back to Cyprus and decide whether I want to come or not. And the lady looked at me and said, no, 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 no. So, so they kept, they kept, they kept denying my visa. They kept denying my visa. I had them. They kept stamping my passport. And, you know, it just... And the, the lady who initially, they wouldn't tell me why. I we applied. They asked me, so where's your, where's your wife? My wife is in England. So what are you applying for? I'm applying for a, vis a visitor's visa, right? Just to visit... Uh, bang, rejection. Rejection, rejection. They kept stamping it. So eventually, right, another story for another day, I got a settlement visa and I came to UK. But do you know... When I came to the UK with a settlement visa, and I got a job, I came on the 29th of May, 97, and I got a job the next, a, a day later, two days later, you know, I was actually happy. Now I uh, now understood and was grateful that I was actually rejected that visa, yeah? Because what would have happened, and they were right, what would have happened is that I would have come to the UK on a visitor's visa, right? I would have applied for a job, I would have gotten the job, and then Pastor Blah would have been crying, oh, please, don't go. <laughs> don't go. That was before your time. Yeah? I'm begging you to stay. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, man. All right. Oh, man. Oh, God. You know, she would have been holding on to my, to my trousers and say, oh, don't go. I can't stay in England without you. It's so cold. Please don't go. Don't leave me here, honey. Don't leave me here. Please. Don't go. I'm begging you to stay. Hey, hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, but you know that's how it would have gone, isn't it? All right. So now I, I was now because so I, when I got that job, and the first question was that, so where's your passport? Do you have a visitor's visa or do you have a settlement visa? I said, ah. So all of a sudden, wow, I'm so grateful for that delay. It made sense now. Does that make sense? So even when you don't get something, in the, when you understand what I'm going to be teaching you tonight, right? Even when, you don't, even when God says no, you know no doesn't mean no. No means that, well, this is not appropriate for me and he has a better plan for me. So he keeps you in faith. No doesn't mean that this is my end. Well, now, for me, I could see in 97, right, I could see the, the difference between yes and no. Visa, visa, settlement visa, I could see. But there are certain things in your life that you may, not even, you may not know, you may not see the other side of the coin until you get to heaven. And then God will tell you, that's why I said no to that business. That's why I said no to that interview. That's why I said no. That's, why, that's the reason why the, that house fell through. Because seven years down the road, 
there's going to be a pedophile living, uh, living next door. I mean, just for example. That's why. That's why I said no. That's why your son didn't get to that school. Because seven years' time, that school is going to fall off the scale with the worst school in the area. But you didn't know that. But sometimes, we will never know until we get to heaven. And then you'll be now, you will not be grateful. You'll be dancing where I'm dancing, right, where I'm dancing right now. Wow, wow, Lord, thank you for rejecting that. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, that visa officer, I love you. Thank you for saying no. Do you understand? Okay, so, um, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Is it 8, 18? Or 8, 16? 8, 18. See, here am I, and the children whom the Lord has given me, right, you and I, it says we are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Now, I don't know what um, there is power in the name of Jesus. Things change when I call your name, right? What, what, what will you do with that? That's signs and wonders. Now, question. Can we really, can we, is that true in your mindset? Can you really genuinely live a life of signs and wonders? The song we sing, do we just, are we just singing it because it's a, it makes us feel good that we have to sing praise and worship before the world comes? Or is this really, am I really singing out of the context of my understanding of what Jesus can do in my life? What is it? Which one is it? But you see, now, if, if it is not, if you are not singing out of your understanding of the context of what God can do, then you need to settle down and ask yourself, what am I really doing? What am I really doing? Am I, and, then, and then this is where you, now, there's nothing wrong about asking those questions, but this is where you seek to know, to grow, and feed your spirit so you can live like that. Does that make sense? Yeah? So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. Come on, tell your neighbor, get approved. It says, finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. Correct? Just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. It says, we exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. So there's a way to walk and there's a way to please God. Yeah? For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. So there is a way to walk and there's a way to please, to please God so that, when, so that things can change when we call his name. Do you understand? So that, thing, that even if things don't change when we call his name, at least we know why. That we know why there is a delay. We know why and we know what we ought to do while waiting. Listen very carefully. It says for, it says for, uh, for just as you receive from us, you, from us, how you ought to walk and to please God. People sometimes think that because they are born again, that there is no... There is no criteria for how you ought to walk. That's not true. That's not true. There is a way you ought to walk. And there is a way you ought to walk so as to please God. Now, if you, do, if, you don't, if, you don't, if you don't walk the way you ought to walk and you are not pleasing God, then you cannot really live the lifestyle, the full potential of that song. Things change when I call you. That's, that's science and one. That's my goodness. I will go to the bank with that. And I have gone to the bank with that. It's unbelievable. The, the things I have done with my faith, my goodness, if I, if I tell you the things, the bizarre things I have done with just simple belief and practicing, you will be shocked. You will be shocked. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Let's look at our supporting, let's look at our supporting text. Acts 2, verse 22. It says, okay, you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested 
by God. A man attested by God. He is a man attested by God. To you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves know. Amen? Yeah? Listen to that. He says a man attested by God. So that word attested means approved. One transition says a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Miracles, wonders, and signs are a symbol, a proof of attestation. Don't let anyone be, don't, don't let anyone talk you into thinking that you, miracles cannot happen in your life. Don't let your challenges get you thinking that miracles, can, rather than thinking that miracles cannot happen in my life, then I may as well spend that time asking myself the other question, how can miracles happen in my life? But the scriptures give us a very clear clue this evening, this, in this scripture. It says Jesus, and he, and he made time to say, it didn't, for the, it didn't call him the son of God. So we don't think that it's something, it, it, so we don't think that it, this is a lifestyle we are unable to attain. Are you following me tonight? He didn't call him the son of God. So we don't think that this, oh wow, you know what, this is one, one um, you know, um, hocus pocus spirit thing that my, it is not humanly possible. No, he said he's a man. And the Bible says that he's like you and I. And he's a man, he was attested. In other words, he was approved. It was, uh, uh, it, it means he was certified. He was, satisfi- he was certified to bear witness, to declare the truth, attest, genuine, genuine, he says, yeah, of God. So God demonstrated signs and wonders through him because he was approved. He was a man approved. That's why I say get approved. You can be approved as well. You can be approved of God. That can be your testimony. I always say one of the reasons why I love going to the nation of Israel regularly is to look at the lifestyles of the men and women who lived in the time of scriptures. And then you will find out that they were ordinary men and women just like you and I live today. But they were men approved, attested by God. That means that you too can be approved and attested by God. You too can. You too too can. It's all in what? In your walk. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1. One transition says, Now then, brethren, brothers and sisters, because the Lord Jesus, because of the Lord Jesus, we ask and encourage you to excel in living a God-pleasing life even more than you already do. Do this the way we taught you. Yeah? Do this the way we taught you. New Living Translation says, let me add this, dear brothers. You already know how to please God in your daily living. For you know the commands we gave you from the Lord Jesus himself. Now, we beg you. Yes, we demand of you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you live more and more closely to that ideal. You want to be approved of God? You want signs, wonders, miracles to accompany your attestation? then you've got to live in a certain way. And it is not too much to live like that. If we do the cost-benefit analysis, uh, it is easier for me to to live in a certain way. It is easier for me to live this life. Does that make sense? It is easier. Uh, It is easier. Because there are so many things in my life, aspirations, there are so many things that... My kids have come, have come against my kids 
right? That, that there is no way I could have dealt with them if not for this way of life. But you can live like that too. Signs and wonders can accompany you as well. Do you understand? Praise the Lord. And so, and so for us to, and so what, are the, what exactly is the way? What did they teach them? He says, he says, we have taught you this before. He said, but we want to continue to work more and more closely to that idea. What exactly did they teach them, teach the early church that, were, that made them, make all of them miracle carriers? What, what exactly was, 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 was in the teaching? So let me just refresh our minds this evening. The first is that we must meet the basic requirements first. Yeah? This is for you and your family. It says, my sons, it says that you and I, it says I and the children that God has given to me, say we are for signs and wonders. We are for signs and wonders. It says, Jesus, a man attested and approved of God. And that attestation was, was um, demonstrated with miracles, wonders, and signs. You, in, in your personal life, you should, you, should, you should experience miracles, wonders, and signs. It's part of our faith. It's part of our faith. You should desire it. And, and to desire it is not enough. To say amen after every prayer is not enough. You must learn to walk in a certain lifestyle. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that lifestyle is what we are, we are explaining to you today. Number one is that you must meet the basic requirement. That is, what is the basic requirement? To believe in Jesus and be born again. Basic. And I know you know the scripture. For God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him, John 3, 17 and 18, is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So you and I, with, that is what? Check. Because we just sang that song, right? Things change. So we believe. We believe. We already believe as you are here. So that in a box, check. So that is what? Basic, basic, basic. If you are, and, and now, and now, the church of God, listen very carefully. The church of God is so attractive right now, so beautiful right now, the people of God are so attractive and so beautiful right now that there are so many people in the body of Christ, in the church of God, that are not Christians. There are so many of your friends, right, that are, though they are in church, but they are not believers. You know why? Because you are a nice person to be around. You don't think so? You are a nice person to be around. Just look at you. The beauty of God reflects so much in you and your family that people will be dumb not to associate with you. Listen, the word of God has so polished you off, right? And you, you may not believe that because you look at yourself and you discount yourself. And you think that, well, no, I'm, you know what, I'm really nobody. I'm just doing my own business. No, 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 you cannot see the halo on your head. You can't see the anointing of God. Have you seen your own anointing? You have not seen it. So chances are that, you will discount yourself. But I'm telling you this, that there are people who just love you. They like you. And they like coming around you. Do you understand? But they may not be saved. So we can have a church full of a crowd and 80% may not be saved. Well, we push it by 1,000 members here. You really think everybody is born again? No. You really think everybody is born again? Oh, you really think I can guarantee that all workers in Great Chapel are born again? No. No. And the fact that they say they do, if something that you have to say to you do, right, then to be a worker, well, but what we are saying is that <laughs> you need to believe in Jesus Christ and your salvation, salvation must come from within. It's not, it's not what we put on. You know, having the spirit of Jesus live on the inside of you, it, it's something special. It's something special. So the first thing is that we have to meet the basic requirement that you know that you are saved. Are you a Christian? Not form, not filling a form. Are you, are you born again? Well, what does that mean to you? Are you born again? Do you really believe in Jesus? 
Well, and anybody can say that. You know, everybody, anybody can say that. But um, we are talking about, we are talking about walking, uh, being accompanied with miracle signs and wonders in your life, right? You've got to live a certain lifestyle. And it starts by you sincerely on your inside testifying to the fact that you are saved. Are you? You know? The second part of that basic requirement is you must forsake disobedience. You must forsake sin. We won't believe about that because we all know what it is. You know, you know, you know, you do the wrong thing. You know, you know, you know that's the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, you know it's the wrong thing, right? So what I'm saying that anything the Holy Spirit tells you not to do and you do it, that is sin. You know it's the wrong thing, so you don't do it, right? So you, so, so, so now that's your biggest challenge, forsaking. Sin and disobedience. Oh, that's your biggest challenge right there. You know, so, so, and you need, you need the Spirit of God to forsake sin. To forsake, you need, you, so it's a daily, a daily prayer, daily cleansing. That's why in the past, many people, they, 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 they think that they can go to a monastery somewhere, lock themselves up, right, throw away the key because they want to purify themselves. You know, some, some faces do that. So we need the power of God to break the hold of sin. And you, and you do that by growing in the Lord. You, by growth, growth, spiritual development and spiritual growth like you are doing now empowers you to do away with sin. You know why? Paul says something. He said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I did childish things. So when you hear the word of God, it, it builds you up, right? So that you can make the choice to do away with sin. In other words, you just grow out of it. You tell, I'm bigger than this right now. So, so, and if you, if you keep tripping on this basic concept, man, it is no miracle following you. It's no miracle following you. There's no, what is the, that song can't happen. The song we sing cannot happen. It is not singing the song that makes it happen. It's not. Every song we sing is powerful and potent. But will it work for you? Will it work for you? Trust me, man. I've been around for three decades on this stuff. You can't, you've got to, um, I want to encourage you to come after this kind of lifestyle. The benefit is too much. The benefit is too much. The benefit, I want you to organize your, now it doesn't mean you won't have fun and you won't engage with the world, no. But be mindful who you are. Be very quiet tonight. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7 says, I love this is living translation. It says, let men cast off their wicked deeds. Let them banish from their minds the very thought of doing wrong. Living, living, new, living translation. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy upon them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Yeah? Let People turn from their wicked deeds, let them banish from their mind the very thought of doing wrong. You can live without doing wrong. You can live without doing wrong. And it says it starts with your mind. You can live without doing wrong. If you are in the habit of doing wrong, it is because you have not seen the benefit, right? Of doing right. If you compare the benefit of, if you compare the effects of doing wrong to the benefits of doing right, so of, of staying in, of disciplining yourself to live a particular lifestyle, I'm telling you the reward outweighs the sacrifice. I, I, I will love to live that, to constantly live in that realm. There is power in them. Ah, things change when, eh, you know, things change when I what? Called things change. What, what is that? That's a magic wand. In the name of Jesus, boom. Name of Jesus, boom. You don't have a job. Name of Jesus, boom. Is that how nice? You broke. Name of Jesus, boom. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I ashamedly so. I have done all that.
Yeah. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, this person is, oh, Lord Jesus, this person is just disturbing me. I'm not happy, Lord. Oh, transfer her. Guilty. Transfer her. I have. Ah, this boss doesn't, oh, this boss, I can't work with it. Ah, I can't, oh, I can't work. Ah, no. Transfer. Ah, Lord, this project, I like this project. I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. And they just, from nowhere, I mean, oh, let's tell you a story on this one. Now, a friend of mine, a friend of mine brought me into a, now, he, he, went, he went to travel around the whole of Europe. Okay, and um, so they told him that, look, you know what? If you, if you get someone to take over your projects in London, right, then we will get you to travel around the whole of Europe, okay? For you to get someone that we can work with, that we can, that we can work with us, that will stay six months to nine months, right, to handle your project, then you can, ah, so he called me. <laughs> Big mistake. And I said, oh, there's this project, you know. Um, I'm going to be traveling around the whole of Europe, all expenses paid, but I want you to come in and stay in, um, say, you know, manage the UK operations. I said, ah, yeah, fine, you know. He said, so they're looking for someone. So I got to that project. I said, ah, I said, mate. Ah, he wasn't a, he's not a Christian. So I said, ah, I said, so where are you moving to? He said, oh, I want to go around the world. I said, ah, but I like that one. He said, no, 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 I'm not giving. <laughs> I said, but I like that one. I said, why don't you say this one and tell them that I can do, I mean, I said, I speak Greek, I speak Arabic, I speak seven Nigerian languages, I mean, you know, I said, he said, no, my friend, no, 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 no. I said, but that's the one I like. He said, no, just come for the interview. You say you can, I go around, go around. I said, okay. So I went for the interview, did the interview. I was successful, thank God. And then, um, uh, as I was about to leave, he said, uh, hang on, Eddie. I said, yeah. I noticed in your <laughs> resume, now you can speak Greek. I said, yes, I can speak Greek. Ah, Yasure. Ah, I spent three years in Cyprus, you know. Wow, really? What other language can you speak? Oh, I, oh man, I, I can speak Greek. I can speak a little bit of Arabic. And then I can do a few Nigerian languages. I can speak, do Yoruba. I can do Benin. I can do something that looks like English. It's called Pidgin language. <laughs> and I can do it. That was how they were laughing at the interview. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I think you should go to Europe. <laughs> Things change when I call you Jesus. So, so what, can you compare that to me committing sin and doing all that? I mean, what you start to lose? This is a magic wand. Ah, hey, someone was telling me, someone was telling me, I said, how are the children? He said, ah, yeah, Christian. Ah, my children, ah, oh. I mean, you know, ah, there are three of them. Yeah, the first one, ah, she's the lowest in her class. Yeah. Ah, the second one, ah, that one is just struggle. Ah, man, I don't know, ah, just struggle. I said, how about the third one? I said, ah, third one. That one is not even on the chart. And I'm thinking, ha, ah, are you serious? And you are not doing it. So what, what are you going to do about them? He said, well, what will I do now? I have spent money on lessons. They can't, they can't, have, they can't just, I don't know. Maybe they are not academically inclined. At what age? They are not academically inclined because you don't know how to call on the name of Jesus. Is that what you're telling me now? Yeah? Yeah? The seven-year-old is not academically inclined because you don't know what to do with your faith. Now, if that was me, <laughs> hey, we will need a refinery, anointing oil. <laughs> They'll be reading soaked books, you know. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Eh? You know what I mean? You know, uh, Dad, uh, my, my book is wet. <laughs> When it was dry, you were not absorbing. You were absorbing now. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> ah? Eh? 
Are you serious? Oh. When you are going, when you are go, when you are going to school in the morning, come, 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 come. Ah, put your hand. Oh, black said everybody. Change his brain, oh God. Touch his brain. Touch her brain, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Ah. What are we saying? What are we saying? But I can't make that happen. For me to make that happen, I have to live a certain lifestyle. I've seen people who are very comfortable. They have money. And then when issues of life come, they can't handle it. They, com- they commit suicide. They can't. When the pressures of life comes, you don't have an answer. You're just living in a void, just void life. There's no root. You know that it's going to be more than this, but you don't have an answer. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have an answer. And as good as all of those things are, there's no inner fulfillment. You know, a woman is a woman. From the There's no difference. Then after you've taken the alcohol and you are high, right, you come down low. It's not as if after getting high, the bills change. <laughs> I mean, that would have been nice. Now every time I say, well, they say, oh, man, you know what? You know, look, and they are both like that. I say, oh, man, I need to just, you know, this, this, this drink, it takes my sorrow away. And it makes me at least, you know, just uh, utopia, just escape for a minute. When you escape, <laughs> and you come back, be the still red. It, 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 it's just, it, it's something. So I have weighed everything. And I've come to the conclusion that this way, <laughs> this way of life is more beneficial for me. More beneficial. So say so you forsake sin. Second Corinthians seven verse one says, New Living New, New Living Translation says, having such great promises as these, having such great promises as these, dear friends, let us turn away from everything wrong, whether of body or spirit. And purify ourselves, living in the wholesome fear of God, giving ourselves to Him alone. Do you know what I'm saying? How many girls do you want to sleep with? How many boys do you want to sleep with? How many alcohol do you want to drink? Where? Wait, wait. So uh, we need to protect our sense of fun. Do you understand? How many? How many? Having such great promises as these, dear friends, let us turn away from everything wrong, whether of body or of spirit, and purify ourselves. It is better to live like a priest. You don't lose anything. I will give anything to make that song a reality in my life. And I have. I'm telling you how I got here. I will give anything. Things change when I call your name. I I, 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 I want to live on that avenue. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Let us lay aside the big part. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that doth easily, so easily beset us. Then the New Living Translation says, let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back and especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around your feet and trip you up. Yeah? New Living Translation. Let us strip off anything that slows us down. It is not that we don't know how to enjoy life. It's not like we don't know how to rock. It says, but man, we've got to live a particular lifestyle so that signs, wonders, and miracles. Let me tell you something, church. Listen, listen. You know what? You can, you can have the best job in the world and not be fulfilled. You cannot buy fulfillment. You cannot buy satisfaction. 
You can't. You can't. You can't. You understand? <laughs> there was a time I was working for a top company, and um, they were paying me 500 pounds a day just to sit down and do nothing. They had me on standby just in case something would go wrong. I spent one week and I was going crazy. Before then, I would have thought, oh, easy morning, sit down. I, my, now, my hotel was next door to their HQ. They put me in a hotel, five minutes walk from their headquarters. Right? And they were paying me 500 pounds a day. And to wake up in the morning and walk across the lawn to the office was painful. Because I didn't like it. I couldn't tell my mates because they would shoot me. <laughs> they would say, well, so what's your problem? They pay you 500 pounds a day to do nothing and you are complaining? That's so why I can't even tell my friends. So I was suffering in silence. I would get up, walk around, come back. You got any problem? No. <laughs> After what I thought about, it's four hours, I would check. It's just nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Fulfillment. You, can't, you cannot buy... It's because you don't have money. That's why you think uh, money is anything. Fulfillment. You cannot buy fulfillment. You cannot buy health. You can't buy happiness. You cannot buy contentment. You can't buy peace at home. You cannot buy peace at home. You cannot buy understanding. Yeah? You cannot buy... Communication to live, you know. <laughs> you say I'm going west, the wife says I'm going east, uh -uh. then we cannot agree where to go. You can't buy that. So he said, Let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back, and especially those things, the things that are not nice to do, that you do in your mind, in your body, in your spirit, that wraps themselves. You know, you have done it for so long, it wraps itself around you so tightly that it trips you up. Trips you all the time. Trips you all the time. Church, there is a, a you've got to fight to live a certain way. It's like going to the gym. This is a spiritual gym. You've got to register in a spiritual gym. It's not going to be easy. But there are benefits. There are disciplines of faith. Next week, we'll continue next week, right? As I take you through this class, right? This is what's going to make you a miracle person in your home. If it's not for you, but for your children. This is what's going to make you a miracle person, a miracle man, because it's there for us. That signs and wonders, I and the children that God has given to me, we are for what? Signs and wonders. And God attested of Jesus, a man, attested of, him, attested of him by miracles, signs, and wonders. So why is he not accompanying you? Rise to your foot and let us pray.